Oh hey, I'm finally gonna start to make a living by talking about the hardest games of all time. All I gotta do is just go quick Google, and here we go. Well, I already talked about the Cuphead, so let's take a look at the others here. Well, most of these games I could afford or, I don't know, I don't have the appropriate systems to play them on. Um, Ninja Gaiden 2. I don't have Ninja Gaiden 2, but what I do happen to own is Ninja Gaiden on the Virtual Console. Well, it's close I could get to playing the original on an official Nintendo console, so might as well try it out. But first, let's take a little history lesson. Ninja Gaiden is a hack and slash side scroller platform video game developed and published by Tecmo. Tecmo first announced the Famicom version of the game in the January 15, 1988 issue of Family Computer Magazine under the title Ninja Gaiden, which would later be used for the game's American version. I found this on Chris Covell's website, and I recommend going through his website. You can find a ton of info about NES and Famicom games in their early stages that were only exclusive in Famimagas, or Family Computer Magazines. It was developed and released around the same time as its arcade version of the same name, but neither were direct ports of each other. According to developer Masato Kato, who is known for penning the script of Chrono Trigger, as well as other RPG titles like Xeno Gears, Chrono Cross, and Final Fantasy VII and XI, the term ninja was gaining popularity in North America, so Tecmo decided to develop a ninja-related game for the NES at the same time the arcade version was being developed. This was Masato Kato's first full-time project as a video game designer. The game was released in Japan on December 9, 1988, with North America on March 13, 1989, and the PAL version on August 15, 1991. Alright, let's finally play a game. Well, as you can see, I'm playing this game on 3DS, which is played through the Virtual Console, which has save states. I lost all the variability. Whatever, it's time for it. Let me tell you, this looks amazing for a game in the late 80s. The amazing graphics and soundtrack. It is also one of the few NES games to have fully animated cutscenes. While they're not a common these days, these are pretty fun to watch. Let's talk about the gameplay. We play as a ninja named Ryu Hayabusa. You mean Ryu from Street Fighter? His father's name is Ken. Okay, Ryu and Ken. How can you not think of Street Fighter when you hear those names? Where were we? Now, as you may notice, this game is incredibly different from its arcade counterpart. The arcade version is more so another double dragon, whereas here you have a more traditional side scroller. You attack using a katana. You can also attack while jumping or in midair as well. You can use your secondary weapons like shurikens, fireballs, and boomerangs by holding up on the D-pad and pressing the B button. Though every time you use them, they'll drain your spiritual strength. You can regain your spiritual strength by collecting red and blue spiritual strength items found in lamps and lanterns by attacking them. Much like in Castlevania, where you destroy the said objects to obtain hearts and power-ups. You can jump on and off walls, but you can't attack in this state. You can jump off walls by holding the D-pad in the opposite direction you're facing and pressing the A button. There are 6 acts in total that compromise 20 levels, each harder than the last. The story is as follows. Ryu's father, Ken, was killed in a duel. After the duel, Ryu receives a letter from Ken which tells him to find an archaeologist named Walter Smith in America. So Ryu goes to America to avenge his father and find Walter Smith. Before he can find Walter, he is shot and kidnapped by a young woman who later hands him a demonic-looking statue before releasing. Ryu finds Walter, who tells him about the demon statues he and Ken had found in the Amazon ruins. There are two demon statues, Light and Shadow. With the two statues combined, they can transform into Jashin or Jashin if you will, the evil demon that Shinobi defeated. So during their conversation, a masked figure steals the shadow figure. Ryu chases him down, retrieves the statue, returns, finds that Walter is dying, and the light statue is missing. 
Three men confront Ryu and take him to an interrogation room where he meets Foster, head of the Special Auxiliary Unit of the CIA. Foster explains to Ryu that someone under the name Jakyo? Hakyo? I'm calling him that guy. So Foster asks Ryu to go to the temple and eliminate him. Ryu finds bad guy holding captive the young woman from earlier. Ryu then drops from sight through a trapdoor and into a catacomb. Ryu encounters Bloody Malt. Ryu beats him and as he is dying, Malt reveals that he was the one who dueled with Ryu's father and that he is still alive. So he reaches the temple's inner chambers, he finds his father possessed by some evil figure. Ryu destroys it to save Scan. Bad guy tries to kill Ryu, but Ken throws himself to save Ryu. Ken is slowly dying, Ryu kills bad guy, a lunar eclipse occurs, Jashin returns, Ryu kills Jashin but gets it pretty badly. Ken tells Ryu to leave him and take the woman instead. Foster orders the girl to kill Ryu, but she chooses not to. The two... Kiss. Happy ending. Alright, let's finally play the game. The enemies immediately respawn after you kill them when they're on the edge of the screen. The enemy placement is the worst. There's little to no space where you can land, attack, or be safe. There are bosses at the end of each act. The first few bosses are quite manageable. I use the term manageable because you are guaranteed to get hit multiple times. Yeah, you get hit by everything. Soldiers, Mike Tyson, birds, dogs, bats. There are three final bosses. The first boss is manageable once you get used to its attack pattern. The second boss, however, is a different story. The fire boss never missed. They'll follow you wherever you go. There's no escape. And also, the second boss takes a while to die. While it may sound like it, there is still an attack pattern, so there's still a chance you can still progress, says the guy who's playing on a virtual console. Next, you fight a giant xenomorph-looking shrimp. Its attack spread around the screen and what's worse is that the final boss is easier than the second boss. Not to mention, the levels in this act are just random. It has so many random enemy placements. You have little or no platform to stand on. You can fall off easily and the amount of enemies attacking you, that's bullshit. Alright. It's one of the list. What else is there? Oh, that's one way to break a person.